everybody, it's Mike from Missouri, and if you're new to the channel, we've been working on this uh, 1990 Case 1840 skid steer, and I have some great news. Uh, finally got the pins and bushings coming my way. Uh, in the previous video, I uh, line bored this with my homemade line bore setup. This is a piece of uh, 1045 cold roll and some uh, pillow block bearings. But I want to show you because I got it fitted properly here. Here's the old, here's the new. See a little bit of side difference. That's how much we had to bore it out. But And it just goes in perfect. Now in the other video I showed you, there's a, a bushing here and a bushing here and they were out of alignment. The pen wouldn't go through. So line boring resolves that because it makes everything in a line. I line board it and then I use the finish hone and took the last few thousandths. Made two of these out of 4140. They are very snug fit. No little, there's, this is a 2000s fit, clearance fit. But we're not done yet. So the original size, the new size, let me show you the problem. The boom here we've been working on. doesn't go. Now if I wanted to take the lazy way, which is what I did first on that other one and use the sandpaper hone, I could enlarge this, but then I run the risk of this angle, both this way and this way, not being the same as this side. So now that the frame is perfect, we need to make sure this is perfect all the way across. This needs to be enlarged probably about another 50 or 60 thousandths. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my piece of 1045 that I've been using as uh, my homemade line bore. And we're going to Okay. Now I cleaned up these brackets that I've been using to bolt the uh, pillow block bearings to. It's crude, but it works. All right, first I'm gonna bolt these uh, pillow block bearings onto the brackets. So this bracket's gonna be on the inside. kind of center these up here in this slot on this bearing because once I weld this bracket on it allows me to kind of shift this up and down if I don't have it close enough. If I need to move it in and out I have to put shims under here. All right let me got all these uh, pillow block bearings bolted down the these scrap brackets I've been using. Let me show you how I'm going to assemble this. I'm going to take my piece of 1045 bar. Oops. Take these tapered bushings that I made on the lathe. They're for centering. The inside bracket. Slide this. Now, this other bracket and bearing, another tapered bushing. Get 
these tapered bushings in the hole here. And then on the outside, another bearing. If you didn't know, pillow block bearings can rotate in the housing. Kind of the beauty of them. They're a little stiff, but uh, you can align things even if your uh, mounting surface isn't straight. So I'm going to straighten this one up. There we go. So what I'll do. I'll hold these bearing bushings in and I'm going on the inside because the inside is less worn than the outside. But I'm going to use these tapered bushings and that's going to align this bar, boring bar, centered to the original holes. And then we're going to tack weld these brackets in place. And that will give us enough rigidity to bore this out. Important part about this is that the area you're boring, so we're boring in this area, it's supported on both sides because if it's not, there'll be too much deflection in the cutter and then the side, your hole will be tapered. It'll, get, it'll be big over here and it'll get smaller as it comes over. So you need to, both bearings on each side. So I'll go ahead and tack this up and we'll be close to putting our cutter in. Okay, I'm going to get these bearings, these bearing brackets clamped in place. I'm holding the tapered bushing tight in this hole so I can get this aligned properly. Push this bushing in, the tapered bushing, so we'll line this side up. Clamp this side, and that'll be our initial mock up here while we weld these inside brackets in place or tack them in place. By clamping them, it prevents or it reduces the amount of weld distortion. When, I, when you weld, it actually has a tendency to pull your piece you're welding. Okay, with both inside bearings tacked on, what I like to do is run the shaft back and forth and make sure it doesn't feel bound up or anything and it feels good. You can see how this tapered bushing I use to center it. It's perfectly even all the way around the bushing on both sides, the other side, push it over. So that's the initial centering. Okay, so I've been looking this over. I pull this back and check the clearance. You can see that it looks the same all the way around the bushing. Same with this side. However, doesn't quite look right on the ends. Let me show you what I'm talking about. 
notice it's up and that way, even though that is perfect. And this one, I need to move this whole shaft over so you can see it. I'm going to take these, let me take this whole shaft out. Well, this one looks pretty good up and down, or side to side, but it's closer. This gap is smaller than this gap. Again, I took the bushings out, but the inside is perfect. So it got me thinking, is it warped like this? It's like the whole, oh, no, my ripped gloves. I used to never wear gloves, by the way, but it definitely easier cleaning your hands. But this whole bar seems to be doing that. Well, I measured from the top of the beam to the top of the beam and the bottom and the bottom and that would check the alignment that way and it was within a sixteenth. It kind of looks like maybe that bushing was welded in a little bit at an angle and that the factory clearances on this boom are loose enough from the factory that it didn't matter. But what I think I'm going to do is split the difference. I'm going to, instead of aligning it perfectly off the center, I'm going to fudge it a little bit the opposite way so it's not so far off. And then by the time I take my 50, 60 thousandths out, it's, it'll basically even out. So the other thing I thought about doing is laying a straight edge on this and measuring down and straight edge on this and measuring down and seeing how that is. But I'm basically going to try to average it out before I bore it because I don't like how far off center that is even though it's centered off this, the inside hole. So I'm going to work on that and I'll bring you back a little bit of progress put this square and measured from here to there on the inside and on the outside and it's the dimension is smaller over here than it is here which tells me the whole bar not only going the wrong way vertically it's also not square going this away, but I want to make sure that I'm not trying to correct something I shouldn't be. So I think my next measurement, and if everything jives, is going to be from the pen. It's going to be from the pen up there, over here to this bar, and then the other pen to the bar over here, and see how close it is. I did measure from the top to the bar, the bottom to the bar, and you can see that it's got a bigger gap here, and the other side is opposite, the bigger gap's at the bottom, so it correlates that the bar is going, in a, is going across at an angle. I want to confirm that's the case by doing some more measuring. Okay, I did some more measuring and I found out measuring across from here to there versus here to there is three quarters of an inch closer together. So then I made a measurement between the inside bearing or bushings inside to inside and it was 34 and an eighth. So I brought a tape measure over here and I got it just inside the inside bushing and read it on the inside over here 
and it's 34 and a half minimum. So we are not quite a half inch too narrow. So if I were to bore it like it is, and then I'm going to have to spread it to get it into the frame, which I imagine that will spread pretty easily, then my holes are going to be off. I checked the straightness of those beams because, you know, I heat straighten the top. The beams are dead straight. The only thing I can assume is when they welded it on the front, it's slightly out. And again, I'm probably trying to make the pins and bushings on this machine tighter than it ever was. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to spread the back, put a block in it, and uh, maybe overspread it to see if it'll hold. But I got it set up on three points so it's not twisted or anything. But I need to bore this at the same width that it's going to be on that machine because then it's going to be too tight on the insider. Probably would be too tight on the insides if I spread it apart getting it into the frame. So it's never easy. Hey, I'm going to get my porter power out here. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight one I've had for more than 10 years, probably almost 20 years at this point. Use this to spread the back of this boom. Okay, I got a little pressure on the cylinder here. What I'll do is I'll measure it's 35 and 3 8 exactly. It didn't take much. Couldn't even feel it on the jack. It's just under 35 and 3 eighths. Probably one more pump on the jack and it probably will do it. Yep. So, question is, is I could jack it some more and see if it'll hold that position. I might bring it out a little bit and see what it does. So now we're at went from 35 and 3 eighths to 35 and 7 eighths. Bring it to 36. Thirty-six and an eighth. Let's see if it held any of that. Probably not. Release the pressure. Yeah. Nope, it's all the way down to thirty-five and a quarter, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of metal to stick in there while I'm uh, boring this and then we'll just have to spread it when we're putting it in the frame of the machine. Okay guys, I think I finally have it where I want it. Let me show you what I did. I put the pin in down here. A measurement from the pin, from this pin to this pin, and we're at just under 88 and 7 eighths. I did the same thing over here, and we're just over 88 and 7 eighths. That's after I centered this. 
Let me show you, it looks quite a bit better. So I ended up moving it that way. I had to actually milled off a little bit on the back of the, this particular pillow block bearing because I couldn't really bend that easily and I didn't want to cut my welds this side. It's pretty good. The other thing I did to verify that I'm square, so I took this welder square again. Clamped it. And then I checked this gap. And before, it was wider here by about 3 sixteenths of an inch, so I moved it in, just pivoted everything. So not everything is exactly perfect, but everything is what I would call averaged. Both sides are tacked on. I'm ready to put the cutter in. Here's the cutter, just a piece of eighth inch high speed steel. Ground properly. And we'll insert it into the hole that I've made on the boring bar. Here's my cutter. Here is a hole I drilled through the piece of bar stock. And then I filed it square to fit this piece of high speed steel. Perpendicular to it, straight down. It's another hole drilled and then tapped 5 sixteenths. And it locks the cutter tight. And on this hole, I drilled a hole where I threaded the back side. And when you run this Allen screw, set screw in, it advances the cutter out. Now this is optional. It just makes it easier to make small adjustments. But if you got your too long a set screw, then it sticks out and it won't slide through. So it's kind of depends on the job you're doing, if you can use it this particular situation I'm going to be able to use it so the bar will spin clockwise so I got to put the cutter in the correct orientation slide it in okay so I put a little bit of tension on it with a set screw and then how I measure this I know when I board the mainframe over there that this dimension from the cutter and I'll get you squared up on the camera here. So I'm measuring from the cutter to the other end of the bar with a dial caliper. And I know my final measurement when I'm doing that is 1.170. Now that's not going to correlate to your hole size because of the arc of the cutter. But what I do is I make an initial cut, make note of what this dimension is and in comparison to the hole and then keep advancing this and keep track so you can do both sides the same. So I'm going to get this set, not to the final dimension because we don't want to take too big of a cut. but um, 20, 30 thousandths smaller than what our final is and we'll make an initial cut and then we'll probably make three cuts total. Okay, so the very last part before we can make a cut is we need a way to control the feed. If you don't have a way to control the feed, it'll take too big of a bite. I have a piece, I think this is three quarter inch threaded rod and I weld it 
onto one of my brackets and it goes against the drill handle. And then as I'm running the drill, I just slowly turn this in. Really basic. You wouldn't think it would work, but it works really well actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this on. You do have to watch how much travel you have here so you can get all the way through the cut. But I'm gonna weld this on and then we'll be ready. Okay, during this cut, it's gonna be a lot of interruption, meaning the cutter is not gonna hit on all sides of the hole because it's not straight. So this is a real light pass just to get things going in the right direction. Then I'll make a heavier cut a little bit later. Well, this looks, again, really crude, but it works. I removed the outer bearing and the bar so I could take a measurement. The inside bearing is going to hold everything in alignment. You can see it's not quite cleaned up on this backside edge. Also on the backside edge on the other side is not cleaned up. So I'm going to see where I'm at and then I'll make another cut. Almost 1.350. All right, another 5 a.m. morning. Yesterday morning, I made the final cut after that last scene that you just saw. And it, it's cleaned up 99%. A little bit on this inside edge. I didn't clean up, but I can't go any bigger because I'm at 1.3, let's see, 6.8. And I want to have about a 10 thousandths clearance and my pen's 1.360. So by the time I finish home this, a couple thousandths, I'll be at my 10 thousandths clearance. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to finish that side, which is the exact same process. So I'm not going to film it, but I'll uh, bring you back for the final results. I just finished running the boring bar through this side. And this side is exactly one thousand smaller than that side at the moment. I can correct that with the finish home. So I wanted to show you guys the shavings that came off. You can see that the that high speed steel cutter cut really well. I didn't sharpen it at all doing this entire process. So worked pretty good. Squirt a little oil in there. Just a little light pressure on the hone at first.
decrease the pressure. Chuck on this drill's wore out. I'm gonna show you where I ended up. 1.369 on this side. 1.370 and a half on this side. Almost a half. So that side's still a little smaller, but that's I'm gonna call that good enough. Got a pin. Minimal movement. So, really happy with how that turned out. I want to test fit this boom to the machine before I finish this uh, painting, and pretty much all it needs is painting. Problem is, I need to get this machine spun around and the cab preferably removed so I can uh, make, it, make it quite a bit easier to get the boom on. I plan on using the forklift and trying to hook to the front left tire, rotate it around, get the cab off, which I'll do a separate video on that. And then I should be able to easily lift this on there, get the back spread open, which I was able to pull that cross beam out of there just by hand, so it's not a lot of tension on those uh, beams pulling it inward. And then we'll get it test fit. So let's get going. This forklift hasn't been started in several months, but it always starts pretty reliably. It'd help if I turn the propane on. First, I'm going to try to just lift up on this tire and drag it around. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. That's a fail. Move on to plan B. It's probably not ideal. There we go. That's not sure I want to pull in the rim like that, but highly doubt it would do anything. There's not a lot of weight on this thing right now.
surprised that this thing is wanting to roll. I don't have the system locked. I need to lift this cab up off of here. It's about center of gravity there. sure I'm clear of everything. Looks good. Running out of space in here.
Getting really close. It's proven to be a little more difficult than I thought. That one started. Won't go in yet. It's the moment of truth, the other pen is in. Look at that. It fits! All right, I'm pretty excited. It is in the frame. Now, the next big question. How does it sit against the front? Is it level? Is it twisted? Hope not. I'm going to let the pressure off of it and we'll get a good look at how it sits on the frame. All right, let's take a look at everything. Here's our spacing. I got both sides pretty equal. I was able to shift it back and forth easily, so that means not under any tension, so that's good. There's one little issue that I don't like. If you see the front pad that supports the arm, let me get the light right here. There's a little gap on this side. Might be a quarter inch. It's very difficult to get a good view on it. Let's try this. I'm pretty confident that would flex down when I'm pushing on the loader, but let me know what you think. Do I need to add a little bit there? I really wish it would have set perfect, but considering all the work I've done to this boom, I think it fits really, really well. So I'm overall really happy with it. And that was a end to a very long, grueling amount of work doing all the pins and bushings and then uh, having to redo the frame bushings. So thanks for sticking with me. Hope uh, the video was entertaining for you and you got some information out of it. We'll see you next time.